Hey, 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 JK here. And I want to thank you for sharing part of your day with me. Well, week 19 is in the books, and we are that much closer to not only fantasy playoffs, but major league playoffs. Other big things that are going to be happening here soon, college football. We have had professional football with preseason starting here in the last week. Uh, it's a very exciting time. I know that's a little off topic, but I'm a huge football fan, and I can't wait to talk to you about fantasy football. Um, but let's get back to baseball. Let's rein it in, because uh, we only have a few weeks left until we are going to be playoff bound, hopefully. So this week has been one of ups and downs and, and, and just roller coaster loops. Um, some big news: there was a team added to our dock, so now we have six teams to talk about. I will get to them last. The five teams we already have. I'm I'm so frustrated with some of them. Uh, there were so many high hopes for some, and we talked about some momentum with quite a few. And I just I feel like all of it's coming crashing down uh, i feel like i'm the atlanta falcons in the super bowl we're getting to the very last little bit and i'm just collapsing mm -hmm. um but we're, we're just gonna jump right into it we're gonna start with the kent murphy dingers um and the story this week was i was getting my butt kicked all week <laughs> it was it was embarrassing um so uh, it come down to Sunday. I was losing two to eight. I had pretty much just given up, at least for this week, not for the year. Uh, but I knew I wasn't going to do anything. So as the games are going on, um, have a few guys starting. He has several pitchers starting. So I'm like, okay, there's no way um, yeah, I'm going to win strikeouts. No way I'm going to win wins. Um, you know, ERA whip already blown. So I, I'm, I'm, there's no way I can come back and win. Well, as the games go on, um, his pitchers are pitching well and, and you know picking up the wins. Uh, he's got uh, like Freddie Peralta and, and, and Pablo Lopez, um, but I had Mr. Logan Webb, and he decided to, to have him a game, uh, one out away from a complete game. Oh, that was frustrating. Had that been a category in this league, I, I might have blown a gasket. But in any case, he had 12 strikeouts in the game, so that's great. Um, so anyway, that was enough to allow me to win the strikeouts. Um, I did not win the wins. However, there were a few uh, wins I could have had this week. And I know we talked about it before, could have, would have, should have. Hate to do it, but man, looking back, it's like, oh, come on, like a little bit of offense or a little bit more defense. Like Kent Tomato, perfect example. He had a great game going, but the Twins just couldn't muster any offense for him and ended up losing because he gave up like one uh, one run in six or seven innings of a very well-pitched game. So that's frustrating. Um, but uh, so, okay, Sunday. Throughout the day, it's it's getting to the point where I am now up to four wins out of the ten categories, and obviously as the other six. And it gets to the Sunday night baseball game. And we both have Braves going. He has Ronald Acuna, Ozzie Albies, and Michael Harris Jr. And I have Matt Olson. The only category that was close enough for me to win was batting average. His batting average was sitting at 284, and mine was at like 280. So, as the game's going on, I'm, I'm not paying much attention to it because you know, we're, we're doing family stuff. I'm not thinking too much about it because I, I, I figured I've already lost. Well, I get a notification. Matt Olson hits a home run. All right, cool. I don't know if that means... I am extending my lead in home runs, taking the lead back in home runs. Maybe he had uh, those three guys on base already, and that gave him three runs. You know, whatever it may be, I, I didn't know. So I, I saw the notification, okay, cool, got a home run. Well, then a little bit later, I checked, and we had tied five categories each. And the batting average was... Me having a 277 batting average and him having a 270 batting average. So Olsen went two for three, two runs, two RBIs, and a home run. And his three players 
went two for 12. Over for Albies, over for Harris, and Acuna went two for five. So his two for 12 uh, ended up losing him, losing him the, the outright win. So you might think, oh, well, that was good. You know, that, that must have kept you in a, a certain spot. Nope. In the last three weeks, the Kent Murphy Dingers have gone 0, 2, and 1. And I've dropped from fourth place with the potential of pushing for a first round bye to seventh place. The frustrating piece of that is that I'm now on the outside looking into the playoffs with four weeks left. The reassuring thing about that is I'm still third in our division and literally one game behind the leader. First in our division and then the other guy who's also in front of me, which is half a game ahead of me. If both of them lose, I jump up and now I'm in second and have a first round bye. So it's crazy. It's exciting. It's frustrating. It's just funny how baseball works. But um, yeah, so Kent Murphy Dingers tied this week, but still lost. Talk about some of the positives this week. We have to start with Matt Olson. He just demolished the ball. He had four home runs. He had 10 runs and 10 RBIs. Um, Jose Altuve was hitting over 500 this week. Um, he had uh, some runs and some home runs, obviously some RBIs, stolen bases. He's been doing great for me. Um, I had three guys with 12 or more strikeouts, whether in one game or over a few games. That included Logan Webb, Julio Urias, and Yuri Perez. Like most weeks, the ads and drops this week were pretty dominated by pitching. I did pick up Graham Ashcraft, who has been on a tear the last few weeks. Saw somewhere, uh, someone point out that he traded the strikeouts for actual command because uh, he was a, a strike throwing machine, which was great when the batters did not hit the ball, but when they were hitting the ball, he was giving up home runs multiple at a time, which means a lot of earned runs and not a whole lot of wins. Um, also grabbed Matt Brash, which is one of my cheat codes, as I have talked about uh, in various other leagues. I also grabbed Stranthony Dominguez and Christopher Sanchez. For good measure, I also grabbed Ian Happ and Joey Manessis. And the drops included Matt Manning, Graham Ashcraft, Luis Medina, Rich Hill, and Sir Anthony Dominguez. Also Ian Happ and Ryan Jeffers. And we're going to switch to the Cheese Weasels team where I continue to stay in fifth place. However, I also continue to lose points. I am down to 103.5 points. Rewind back to, I don't know, five weeks ago, I was talking about how I was 112 points, fifth in the league, pushing and gunning for more points, taking over categories. Well, that is in the river mirror and I am just hoping that my pitching can stop sucking. Um, I had to make some tough choices this past week. I dropped some guys I really just, I had to because I needed space on my team. Um, not gonna talk about what anyone did well because I keep losing spots and it's frustrating. I am still leading several, so I mean, it's not like fifth place is bad, but Let's be real, we're always shooting for first. This is a Roto League, so this league still has think, eight weeks left now, so there's still time. Getting to the ads and drops. I grabbed Jamer Candelario. I don't know how he was on waivers, but he was, and now he's part of my team. I also picked up Eduardo Rodriguez, um, Jordan Montgomery, Kenta Maeda, Steven Matz, who is now out, probably going to be shut down for the rest of the year, uh, and Christopher Sanchez. And as far as the drops, we already talked about one, Joe Ryan. It was sad, but he had to go. He was taking up space. Uh, another very sad one, Josh Jung. Man, he was doing so well in Texas with that dynamic lineup he had around him. Um, but his thumb is probably going to keep him out. And thinking about it, it hopefully not but it might take away some power. He may very well be back for the playoffs. Uh, let's hope he is, but it, it might not be the best thing power-wise because he was showing some power. I think he had uh, 20 home runs. If not 20, he had you know close, 18, 19, something like that. Um, but again, 
he was in a lineup that was dangerous. Uh, so if you weren't going to pitch to him, you were going to have to look at Garcia or Lowe or Seager or Simeon. So, you know, the, the top half of that lineup was super dangerous. And then the rest of the drops ended up being pitchers. Uh, Eduardo Rodriguez, Kitameda, Christopher Sanchez, and Jordan Montgomery. So now that we have went from a tie to a loss in the standings, let's go up, 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 and away. Let's talk about a five-game win streak, shall we? That's right. The Funky Junkie Joker Monkeys are on a five-game winning streak. We are now sitting at 500 at a 9-9 record, and I am two games out of playoff contention. There are currently four teams that are 11-7. and seven. I am 9-9, nine and nine, like I said before, so I'm two games away, and I really think I'm going to be able to grab one of those spots. Looking ahead over the next four weeks, there are um, a few games I feel very comfortable with. There's one game I am worried about. It's the number one guy in the league. Uh, we will see how that goes. I am pretty confident that I will win this week and uh, then hit the number one guy next week. So, uh, fingers crossed, I can just continue this winning streak right into the playoffs. And from there, as we've said it before, anything is possible. The win this week came as a result of a 548 to 416 score. Some of the guys that did phenomenally well for me scored at least 51 points each, including Jose Altuve, Pablo Lopez, and Freddy Peralta. The ads and drops for this week were, again, pitcher dominated, but also very short. I added Sean Manaya and added Steven Matz, which I am also going to tell you I have dropped Steven Matz since then. And the drops included Drew Smiley and Martin Perez, both of which have been moved to the bullpens for their respective teams. So that might be something I look at, again, talking about my cheat codes, my bulk relievers. If they're not going to be starting pitchers, then I can use them without using one of my starts. So that could be something to think about. As we transition to the ESPN leagues, I'll let you know both teams lost this week. It was very frustrating because I was seeing this week as one to jump closer into playoff consideration or at least jump into a spot closer to gaining a first round bye as a first or second team in the league. Um, Russell, my Jim Jams, lost this week 10 categories to four categories to two categories, bringing that record to 104 wins, 138 losses, and 46 ties. I'm sitting in eighth place and again, 17 games out of playoff contention. The as and drops for Russell, my Jim Jams, was very minimal. I added Matt Brash and Christopher Sanchez and dropped Jamison Tyon. And finally, South Harmon Institute of Technology lost even worse, 11 categories to four categories to three categories. With a record of 147 wins, 121 losses, and 56 ties, I am still in second in my division, 14 games behind, and third overall in the league. The ads this week included Cutter Crawford, J.D. Martinez, and Chase Silseth. The drops included Taj Bradley, Bailey Ober, and Edward Julian. And as promised, we're going to talk about one more team, the new team I took over. Now, it's very odd to take over a team in week 18. However, I did see a message on Facebook asking if anyone did want to take over a team at this point in time. I messaged him, got some information, uh, which I'm going to pass on to you, and I did end up agreeing. Apparently, this league has been around for 10 years, and the idea is to bring in someone who's going to be in it for the long haul. Uh, well, I am. I have no problem um, investing time and effort into a team, especially if I think and know that I can make them better. Um, this team does have the potential to have four IL spots and four NA spots. There are 17 keepers, and then uh, the final seven rounds, obviously, are the ones that you pick from the rest of the pool. Um, individuals in the most recent draft class will not be able to be picked until next year's draft, so I can't pick up Paul Skeens until next year, if I so choose. Um, there is a $100 waiver wire budget for the year. The guy I took over for spent $88, so I have $12 left. Um, so we will hopefully use that wisely. Um, and I've already made some ads and drops for this past week because I took over last, like Wednesday, Thursday, something like that. So I've already made some ads and drops, and I'll go over those um, shortly. But I want to show you the team that I'm going to have going into my first week as the true owner of this team. At catcher, we have MJ Melendez. That is one of the guys I picked up this week already as 
uh, one of my newest additions. Um, I knew that he was going to have that dual eligibility and I wanted to make sure I had some wiggle room. Uh, the person he did have at catcher was Tyler Soderstrom. I did drop him. At first base, we have Nate Lowe. I love Nate Lowe. He's on multiple teams of mine. Uh, so I was so happy to see that he was on this team as well. At second or shortstop, we have Marcus Simeon. Um, he's a guy I've already received several trade offers for. I wasn't a huge fan of him, but he really came on strong this year. So I could very well look to trade him, but we'll see. I need to make sure I'm going to have someone at second and short moving forward. At third, currently, I do have Spencer Steer. He has first base, third base, and outfield eligibility, which is great. On a young and talented Reds team, um, he's going to have individuals uh, like Ellie, uh, like my boy John in India, um, just to name two, uh, who are going to be able to get on base in front of him so Spencer can bring him in. Another recent ad from yours personally, Ezekiel Tovar. He is hitting in the shortstop position right now. Um, a Colorado Rockies player, you know, you can go back and think of uh, that left side of the defense uh, for years back being manned by some very prolific hitters, um, Tulowitzki, Arenado, and I'm not putting him in that category. I'm just saying that in Colorado, you do have potential to maximize uh, power. If you don't have a ton, it does look a little better in that thin air. So Tovar just tonight actually hit a home run for me, so that was great. Um, but I did pick him up recently. Um, I thought that he would be a good young bat, especially moving forward if he's going to stay in Colorado. I feel like my outfield is looking pretty good. Nick Castellanos um, was terrible last year. Uh, definitely improved all the way up until probably about two weeks ago and then hit a slump and was just awful. He is picking it back up, so I'm glad I have him. Um, if he's not a trade piece for me, is at least someone that I can have as a veteran presence. I also have Yoshida from the Red Sox. I'm a Yankees fan, so I like the 300 plus batting average. However, definitely want some more RBIs, want a little more power, want some more stolen bases. But hey, it's his first year over here playing in the States. Uh, I'll cut him a little bit of slack. He's doing very well so far. And the Red Sox, while they're not in first, they're definitely doing better than my Yankees, which is sad. Also have Josh Lowe. Um, that man can run. He has some power, obviously, in that Rays lineup that has other heavy hitters. Um, and with the recent news about Wander Franco, uh, I feel like there's going to be a lot less of him sitting. Um, not that he can play shortstop. However, they are going to need to find someone to fill the production from Wander. Uh, so hopefully Lowe can um, be in the lineup more than he is out. Uh, especially with the the slumping uh, Luke Rayley and um, Harold Ramirez, like those guys, they're not looking great. Um, so hopefully, again, Low can stay in the lineup. For my utility pieces, I have Tristan Casas. That is another Red Sox player that has done very well as of late. He wasn't doing a ton early on in the season, but has come on as of recently and decided to hit moonshots. So while I don't like watching the ball go out of Yankee Stadium, I do like seeing the numbers add up on my stat sheet. Um, speaking of the stat sheet, I am also going to go over the stats we're going to count in this head-to-head uh, -head categories league. Uh, I've not forgotten about that. I'm a big Josh Donaldson fan. So seeing the player Matt Chapman on my team manning third base for the Blue Jays is bittersweet for me. I'm not a huge Chapman fan because he can barely hit the broads out of a barn at times. However, when he does hit it, it goes a long way. Very similar to Josh Donaldson, uh, not in 2015 when he won the AL MVP. Um, Donaldson, this year for the Yankees, uh, had very few hits, but 10 of those hits were home runs, so it's literally boom or bust. Uh, but getting back to Matt Chapman, I liked him uh, in Oakland, which again, Josh Donaldson played in Oakland uh, before coming over to the Blue Jays. So again, it's, it's like a mirror image of my boy Donaldson, but... 
Chapman is is going to be a piece I won't be afraid to trade away. Um, he did start the season off incredibly hot. Um, and had I had him, I would have absolutely traded him. Um, but, you know, he, he's on the team. He will hopefully produce for me. And we'll see where it goes from there. You'll also see I have Kiber Ruiz. That's another recent addition that I had. Um, MJ Melendez, as we talked about before, is an outfield eligible catcher. Kiber Ruiz has been on fire as of late, and I think that he will continue to do well. He is a guy that I've been looking at since he came up in the prospect rankings um, and was traded from the Dodgers over to the Nationals. Um, so literally coast to coast, um, I've been following him. Um, I hope that he continues to hit well in that Nationals lineup with some of the other young players, uh, including C.J. Abrams, and not so young, but still considered young in the league uh, because last year was rookie year, Joey Manessis. Um, but um, hopefully Ruiz can keep it up. Um, he's definitely a more offensive catcher than a defensive catcher, so he will uh, hopefully be gaining eligibility at first or third or something like that so that um, you know, maybe carrying two catchers isn't always the case. And now we get to a player that I've had on my team several times, and I have liked having him on my team zero times because he is always hurt or just overall underwhelming. Um, Carlos Correa. I'm sure he's a wonderful person. Um, I also uh, know that he is a cheater who played for the Houston Astros when they won the World Series. But he is on my team, so I hope he plays well for the Twins. It's enough about him. We also have Jamer Candelario for the newly hitting out of the park Chicago Cubs. Man, they are just uh, having themselves some time there in Chicago uh, on the opposite side of Chicago than the dumpster fire Chicago White Sox. So Chicago Cubs are doing great. And Candelaria has first and third eligibility, which is great. Allow him to move around uh, in my lineup if I do have Nate Lowe out or Tristan Casas out or need to move Spencer Steer or something like that. So I like Jamer Candelario um, at my first and third or utility position. This next guy, I'll be honest, I don't like. I would not have had him on my team, um, and I will think about dropping him um, and or trading him for literally nothing. Um, Byron Buxton. There's nothing I have to say about him. He's on my team. The next two guys are in the top 100 prospects. Uh, they are Xavier Edwards of the Marlins and, as we talked about before, Kyle Manzardo of the Cleveland Platinum Level Health Insurance team. I think both of those guys are going to come up at some point in time in the future, uh, do well for their respective teams. Um, I, I really think that uh, Manzardo is going to have a better shot uh, to play because the Platinum Level Health Insurance team traded um, Josh Bell to the Marlins for it, Manzardo. Um, Naylor is out for a period of time, so if they do decide to call him up when the rosters do expand, um, I would like to see what he can do. As we move to pitchers, we're going to talk about two more Astros. One of them uh, was probably still in high school when the cheating Astros won the World Series, and the other one was a Cy Young winner that year. We're talking about Hunter Brown and Justin Verlander. And Justin Verlander has been the center of a few trade talks already for me, and it's been very frustrating. I do believe Hunter Brown will likely be shut down at some point in time in the future. Uh, I know his start this week is being skipped. Um, I think that the Astros should go to a six-man rotation to give some of the younger arms some time. Um, and then other, some of the older arms, I mean, Verlander's almost 40, so that would give him a little bit of time between starts. Um, but again, just to, to make sure that you're not running the kid down, he's been great throughout the season. Uh, yes, he's hit some, some rough patches. His ERA is above four, but he's getting some strikeouts, and, and that's, that's pretty good, especially in a division where he has teams that – you know, can hit the, the cover off the ball like the Rangers. So um, Verlander and Hunter Brown, uh, individuals I do like having on my team. Another Astro on my team, Ryan Presley. Um, 
Not much to say about him. I mean, he, he closes games for me, so that's good. And for the Mets, Kodai Senga is on my team. Uh, in his first year pitching over in the States, he has done pretty well. Picked up quite a few wins, um, racking up the strikeouts, keeping the ERA and the whip respectable. So, again, glad he's on my team. I also have someone I mentioned before, Logan Webb. This guy is on at least one of my other teams. I'm glad I have him. I have been offered multiple things. Uh, in return for him in various leagues. I do want to keep him, though, because uh, I think he is one of the bright spots uh, for a Giants rotation that they're devastated by injuries or players who will have a great year, Alex Wood, and then just become a pumpkin, you know? Um, and, and they're relying a lot on bullpen and bulk relievers, Jacob Junis, Sean Mania, to, to name two, which helped me a lot in my start restriction league. Um, but that's, uh, I don't think they can replicate what the Rays have done over the past few years uh, with their guys. Um, another guy that got hurt, Desclafani, he's been hurt several times. I used to, to really like that guy when I'm on my team, but again, just injuries have just derailed him and made him not even usable or rosterable. Some of the closers I have on my team include Josh Hader, uh, Johan Duran, and Jordan Hicks. A newly acquired reliever is Tanner Scott. This man is blowing the ball right past hitters, and it's been great. I enjoy having him on my team because he will pick up some wins here and there. He will pick up holds mainly, but he'll also salvage a save or two. Now, obviously, with David Robertson being traded from the Mets over to the Marlins, uh, A.J. Puck was moved to uh, setup guy, so Tanner Scott is now another setup guy, like the pre-pre-setup guy. Um, but I really think he's better than Puck. Uh, I think he's got better stuff. Bobby Miller is also another pitcher I have on my team. Another young guy in a great situation in um, Los Angeles because um, even if he doesn't have the best ERA, uh, the Dodgers are putting up runs enough to give him uh, run support to where uh, you know a 3 ERA, 4 ERA is still going to get you some wins. So um, another positive there. Another addition from yours truly is Griffin Caning. He'll be working out of the bullpen uh, to build his arm strength back up and to build his stamina, but I feel like he is going to have great strikeout potential once he gets back up to full strength. Um, the Angels did a number on their rotation as well as their bullpen and their starting lineup uh, to make a playoff push, so I think Caning will be someone to help this year, uh, but also someone that I'll be able to look at keeping for next year if... Again, I choose to focus on pitchers opposed to hitters. Moving to the home stretch, we are going to look at IL and NA position guys. First one we're going to look at is Marcus Stroman. Um, he has done very well for the Cubs. Um, never really been a huge strikeout guy, but he has gotten the job done uh, for the most part. So I'm glad that I'm going to have him coming back here soon. Uh, a tragic story in Liam Neeson uh, at this point in time because he did have Tommy John. He came back from cancer. I don't know how else you can top that other than coming back from cancer and Tommy John in the same season. Um, so we're going to be looking forward to having him next year. I don't know how I'm going to keep him. Um, but in any case, I'll, I'll at least keep him an IL in, until someone else gets hurt. As far as the NA spots, I have Taj Bradley and Jack Leiter. Um, we know Bradley is going to be back at some point in time because the Rays are continuing to be hit with injuries here and there. Um, they will probably need to have Bradley back up uh, once they give him a little bit of rest. Um, as far as Leiter... Um, in that Texas Rangers organization, he's going to be able to build up his arm strength, build up his mechanics. And once he does get there, if this offense is still around, I mean, this man's going to grab wins like it's no one's business. If they don't bring him out of the bullpen, which that, that could also be an option. Um, but in any case, that is the team. Um, those are the guys. I touched on a few of the guys I picked up. Um, we will hit on uh, the specific guys I picked up and the guys I dropped in just a second. But again, let me know what you think of my new team. Um, I think there's some potential. I definitely think I have options. Uh, I have trade bait. Um, you know, this is day five of me in this league. Some of these guys have been in it for 10 years. So, uh, really going to have to be looking at um, prospects coming up and, and the ages. 
you know, uh, I know I was talking about the trades just uh, while we were hitting on a few of those players. The commissioner of this league is now mad at me for not trading him Justin Verlander. So he has thrown me a few different deals, uh, not only for Verlander, but for Logan Webb, for Josh Hader, um, who else? Marcus Simeon. And he has offered me guys like James Paxton and Gary Sanchez, David Bednar, um, and my favorite, Aaron Savali. He said that Aaron Savali for Justin Verlander straight up was fair because Verlander is almost 40, he's over the hill, and Savali is 12 years younger than him. I know you don't know the categories yet, but I personally cannot think that Aaron Savali for Justin Verlander straight up is anywhere close to a deal that anybody would make. I mean, unless you are a huge platinum level team in Cleveland fan or now a Tampa Bay Rays fan, I, I, I can't think of anyone who's going to make that deal. But in any case, um, I do want to talk to you about the categories like I talked about before. Um, offensively, we count runs, home runs, RBIs, stolen bases, and on-base percentage. For the pitching categories, we count strikeouts, ERA, whip, quality starts, and saves and holds. So the saves and holds are together. So uh, there are 10 categories that we will be playing. Um, I personally am glad we're not looking at certain categories um, like a batting average or like wins because those are um, very, very misleading. We'll take Max Muncy, for example. The man can't hit the broads out of a barn. But when he does hit the ball, it goes a long way. The batting average may not be indicative of what they're actually doing because they're drawing walks. Um, Ryan Noda in Oakland is another example. The man's got like 70 walks, um, but his batting average is like 230. Well, his on-base plus slugging is up you know, near 800, if not more, because he gets so many walks. He gets on base and he can hit home runs. We talked about Ken Maeda. Oh my gosh, that man can pitch so well. But if his twins and Carlos Correa aren't getting him run support, he's not going to get the win. And so someone like Griffin Jacks or Thibar or Johan Duran is going to come in and steal the win. And they pitch, what, one inning, if that? Um, maybe they come in and get one out. You know, it, it, so it's it's one of those situations where wins are not indicative of how the pitcher actually does. Christopher Sanchez is another great example. He started 10 games. He finally won his first game this past week, but his ERA is below three and his whip is like 1.0 something. So the man is doing good stuff in Philadelphia, even though the team isn't necessarily doing what they need to do behind him because they're not giving him the run support. So again, Getting off my little soapbox rant um, about the categories. I enjoy having these particular categories. Um, so we will continue to run with those. Very quickly review the guys I added. Kiba Ruiz, MJ Melendez, Tanner Scott, Griffin Caning, and Ezekiel Tovar. And now the guys I got rid of. David Schneider from the Blue Jays. Clark Schmidt from the Yankees who got lit up tonight for like eight earned runs and Tyler Soderstrom. So if you think me releasing those guys was a mistake, let me know. Um, if you think my pickups were good, let me know. If you think um, I need to have a talk with the commissioner because he's whining because I'm not trading him, Justin Verlander, for guys that are not worth, <laughs> uh, in my opinion, worth a Verlander. He said I was borderline insane for asking for someone back like Freddie Freeman or Juan Soto or Lindor. Look, you never know if you don't ask. Did I really think I was going to get those guys straight up for Verlander? No, but again, Mr. Jordan said you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So I might as well have said, hey man, give me Lindor and Aaron Savali and I'll give you Verlander. I'm like, oh yeah, it's great. So, you know, it is what it is. 
Um, the only thing I want you to be mindful of is the fact that here soon rosters will be expanding. So you're going to be seeing some of those AAA guys come up. Um, some of the guys are already making waves. Kerry Carpenter, Zach Geloff, uh, two to, to start off. Um, some of the pitchers that are going to be coming up, uh, they're going to be limited roles, likely openers or bulk relief guys. So make sure you're looking at those as well. Um, and then for some of the, again, some of the teams that are lower in the division, they're going to be giving their guys some starts. They're going to be giving those guys a longer leash because they want to see what they can do, especially testing their perseverance. When they get down in account, when they have let up a few earned runs in the first inning, when, when they can't get an out, when they can't hit the strike zone, the, the coaches want to know, how's this guy going to bounce back? So um, you know, take it with a grain of salt, some of their starts, but at the same time, make sure you're going to be looking to see if your guys uh, from the team that you root for are going to be coming up. They could be guys you add to your NA spot and just hold them throughout the year. Maybe they're keepers for next year, whatever it may be. But in any case, that's something I'm excited about, seeing the rosters expand, seeing some of the guys come up. Um, and, and really seeing this last push for the playoffs. Um, I know uh, I've come to just accept that the Yankees are not going to make the playoffs, um, and it's okay because we need to figure out what the heck is going on with our pitching because, I mean, we, we have just pissed away leads to the White Sox, um, the Marlins last night, I mean, a, a five-inning, ninth inning, a five-run ninth inning. Like, you, you you're not going to win games with that. You're definitely not going to win the division, and you're not going to sniff the World Series. So, you know, it's just one of those things. But thank you, thank you, thank you so much for tuning in for Week 19 review of the Fantasy Leagues, including the new team. Um, hopefully, you um, have some input on the team, uh, maybe who I should pick up, who I should drop, who I should look for, uh, maybe sell on the waiver wire. But in any case... Again, thank you so much for joining me for Week 19. This is Jay Cake, and I want to thank you for spending part of your day with me.